getting a chance to talk this morning with Jenna Helwig. She is the author of Real Baby Food, which is full of easy, all-natural recipes for your baby, your toddler, even yourself, really, if you want to uh, have some of these meals. So good morning, Jenna. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. Actually, I should really thank you for uh, not only talking to me, but uh, making this book. I um I'm about a month away from having my first child, and I literally have been saying for months, I was like, I really want to find a great book on making my own baby food because it's something I've always been interested in. And then they came to me and were like, hey, do you want to do this interview? And I was like, this is the perfect book. Oh, good. Well, congratulations. That's so exciting. Thank you very much. Yeah, the this this book was like literally everything I was hoping to find in making my own baby food and I guess the highlights of making your own baby food and kind of why it can really help with preventing the allergies for kids and things like that? Yes, absolutely. You know, one of the things that allergy experts now recommend is feeding babies peanuts at about six months after they've um, tried and tolerated, you know, um, traditional foods like fruits or vegetables. So, giving them peanut butter at that early age might actually help prevent allergies, um, further on. And it seems like allergies are like a little more uh, prevalent in kids. Maybe it's just because there's better testing now or whatever the case is, but I just feel like more kids have allergies. Do you think it's because of the processed food or because of the apprehension of parents to give kids, you know, things like peanuts that young? Well, I think it's difficult to say, but, you know, conventional wisdom held that by delaying the introduction of certain foods, we would reduce the level of allergies. But in fact, these recent studies have shown the exact opposite. So debatable why there seem to be more, but certainly, hopefully, by introducing some of these foods earlier, will help cut down on the rates in the future. And was it the fact that you wanted your children to maybe not have allergies that prompted you to want to make your own baby food? That was a big part of it. Allergies also. I just wanted to be able to give my daughter, you know, really fresh, really healthy food that I could, you know, add interesting flavors to. I didn't want her baby food to be boring. And so that was really um, one of my big drivers in making her food and then writing real baby food. I love it. And and I love some of these recipes. Like, I mean, obviously you, you start out simple when the baby's like four or six months, that kind of thing. But you really take it to a point where you're making meals for the entire family. Absolutely. I mean, I think you're right. So we start out very simply with, you know, purees and simple finger foods. And incidentally, this is an easy time to actually introduce a little bit of peanut butter into your baby's diet. You can just stir a little peanut butter into a vegetable puree or something like that. Nice. But, and then, but you're right, you can continue, you know, making more and more food for your family. That was really one of my hopes is that if people start making their own baby food, they see how satisfying it is to cook for their family and they continue and have family dinners together. So it's all good stuff. I love it. And I really love the fact that, you know, I think a lot of people think you have to buy jarred baby food. It's just what you do, but you're making meals for yourself. Why shouldn't you be making food for your baby as well? Yeah, absolutely. And it really is easy because, you know, especially with these simple purees, you can make them in big batches and freeze it. And then most days you won't even be cooking. You'll just be defrosting, which is so simple. And I think a lot of people need to hear that. They hear making your own baby food and they think that's going to be so time consuming. I can't possibly do that. But if you really just spend maybe a few hours on a Sunday prepping meals like maybe you would for yourself during the week, prepping a whole bunch of baby food, it seems like it's very easy to freeze and save. You can almost save it like in an ice cube tray, and those are like the perfect little sizes for a baby belly. That is the best way to do it. And you're right. If you cook just for even an hour or two on Sunday, you might have enough food for a month for your baby. And so you can't beat that. It's so true. They don't eat very much. Right. (laughs) Exactly. Especially early on. (laughs) It's so true. I love the fact that you do like the kind of like the breakdown of how often to feed your baby as well. Because, you know, for a first time parent, it's not only what to feed your child, but maybe how often and portion size and those kind of things that you may not really know. And it's kind of amazing how little the portion size is for like a four month old. You know, that's exactly right. And I'm glad you found that helpful. But it's true, you know, early on, especially in the early days of feeding, you know, they're still babies are still going to be getting most of their nutrition from breast milk or formula. And these early times of trying purees or finger foods, it's really just to get them used to the idea of eating and and trying new tastes, but it's not as much about, you know, making sure they get all of their protein and stuff until a little bit later on. Right. (laughs) And I guess trying different tastes, I mean, your your baby isn't going to like everything. You personally don't like everything either. So, you know, 
knowing what what they do and and don't like and what recipes to maybe try and avoid is, I guess, trial and error over a, a period of months. Years. That's right. Yeah, I would say, though, that even if it's the first time your baby tries something, if she doesn't like it, don't give up on that food. Sometimes it takes up to 15 exposures for babies or kids even to accept a new food. So really? Just, yeah, so don't give up because even if your baby doesn't like sweet potatoes on Tuesday, in a few weeks she might be like, sweet potatoes are the best thing ever. So don't, yeah, keep it up. All right, so don't make a batch of sweet potatoes. She tries it once, and you're like, forget it. I'm throwing all this out. (laughs) Keep it and go through the rest of it. (laughs) Um, You can eat it yourself if you wanted. That's true. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So was this something that, like, a book you came up with while your daughter was still a baby? Or was it when she was older and you kind of looked back on all the stuff you had made, you thought, I'm putting it all into a book for other moms? Well, so I did come up with a lot of these recipes when my daughter was little. And then I actually believed in homemade baby food so much, I started a business teaching other moms how to make homemade baby food here in New York City. And then um, a few years later, I became food editor at Parents Magazine. So I'm very immersed in feeding babies and children. And it just seemed like the right time to share some of this information with people because, you know, in addition to feeding your baby at an early age and helping prevent allergies and big questions like that, you know, people have questions about picky eaters and you know, what to do when they, their toddlers are a little older and how to get them to eat fruits and vegetables. So it felt like I could come up with a good resource for parents to help ease their minds a little. I, I think this is a fantastic resource. I mean, real baby food really covers everything almost from like start to finish. I mean, there's meals in here that I know I would definitely want to try for me and my husband, maybe even before the baby gets here. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. There are a lot of these meals that we eat together as a family, so that's for sure. And I think that's great. It's just kind of establishing the whole family environment, you know, as soon as they're a baby and then almost kind of starting these family rituals. And it's a really great, great read. It's literally everything I was looking for. And I would definitely encourage other moms to check it out as well. If they've even thought about making their own baby food, because it's probably easier than they think. Thank you so much, Nancy. (laughs) Well, thank you. So for the time, thank you for writing the book. And I know I'm going to put it to good use. Okay, great. Good luck. That was Jenna Helwig, food editor at Parents Magazine and author of Real Baby Food. Easy, all-natural recipes for your baby and toddler. The book is out there now, and I definitely highly recommend it.